Welcome to the Twin Flame Awakening Podcast. Today is an episode episode number 24. It's the guest post time. It's a Wednesday episode, of course. Thank you so much for coming back to this uh, channel. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe and get connected with, with all of us. So that would mean the world to me. So if you like today's episode, hit the like and subscribe. And we are going to dive into today's episode of from my guest as many of you who've been listeners before know that i share your story your twin flame story with my audience and if you're new here and you wonder why you should listen to someone else's twin flame journey and twin flame stories i've heard from many of my kind souls that hearing stories from others and connecting with the stories helps you to understand that no first of all you're not crazy twin flames do exist and this is a divine love kind of experience which is so confusing and even myself knowing that when i first heard about the twin flames and when i first dive into this idea that there are twin flames out there i was convinced 100% that this is not the reality and this is not truth and even today when I hear that some of my clients say I'm not 100% sure if it's a twin flame journey or if it's if the twin flames exist and all of that which I totally agree that it's difficult to understand and difficult to get into this idea that you're all of a sudden into someone you've never met before You don't know who they are and you can't get your mind off of it. And you wonder why I can't get my mind off of someone I just briefly met. Uh, Right before we're going to dive into today's story, I will also say if you wish to share your story to inflameawakeningjourney at gmail.com. If you wish to book the appointment, uh, the first consultation call is free to inflameawakeningjourney at gmail.com. If you wish to continue afterwards with healing and all of that, you can continue from there on. For me, it's just important that when we first have a call that I get to, I, I how I would say, I would channel your energy to understand which stage you are in and how long it might take for you to get over. I have another very interesting thing to share. Uh, those who joined us with this uh, last Sunday, with us on a Patreon, uh, we had a live Zoom call where you could share your ways, your ideas, what happened, uh, what do you, how do you see now the Twin Flame journey, what is bothering you, what is holding you back. Because many of you know, who have been following me for quite some long time, I do not sell you the idea that Twin Flame connection is the union just with your Twin Flame. I talk about the energy, the higher self, the higher being, the higher you, the higher energy, because at the end of the day, twin flames are the same uh, consciousness, same soul, just split into the two bodies. And it's, and it, and it's, uh, how do I say, it serves the world or serves this experience in the same consciousness. That's why When you meet your twin flame, they trigger all of your uh, insecurities, all of the things that you're supposed to do this. They are like like looking into you and saying, this is who you are, this is what you're supposed to do, and this is how it works for you. Why I'm not selling you the idea of that twin flame union is only when you are physically together, because it will never ever happen. If you do not become your higher self, the moment you become your higher self, the moment you understand your self-worth, you understand your soul purpose, you understand the energy, you, you realize that the world you have known so far is not exactly what you, what is the reality or what is the energy. Because everything is energy. Everything what we attract, everything what we become, everything what we do is energy energy it's nothing to do with two physical bodies and my way of how do I say coaching and helping you to become your higher self is to help you to understand that now you are the divine love 
you experience the love. And love is everything in this world. If you have love energy, if your chakras are open, if you realize the good in you, if your self-doubt, if your fears, if all of the things you're holding you back are gone, you will manifest the life that you will literally tell me at one day, how did you know? How did you know that I'm capable of doing so? So that's why when your twin flame is in a separation, not talking to you, my coaching is, yes, to heal the souls, to give this energy. I channel the energy. I see what is over there, what can ha- be the possible, uh, how do you say, idea of that you're not together in a physical world. But also, my main goal is to make you to become your higher self. The higher self who manifests everything, who makes their own reality, who becomes this love and light that is so beautiful person, that is so beautiful soul. And this is what we need here in this world. Will it, does it mean that you'll never be with your twin flame? No, not at all. I have many of my clients who have gone together with their twin flames or about to just in a couple of weeks now. So it's nothing to do that you, you cannot be, but you need to understand your higher self, your purpose, and you can't operate this in fear. If you have fear inside of you, whichever kind of fear, fear of losing something, fear of not being loved, fear of not making a new step, fear of trying something new, loving your comfort zone, loving everything what you have and you are unable to do on your own. Because if you believe at this stage that you'll be only loved and happy and in union when your twin flame comes physically back, it will never be in union. Because the union is inside of your soul. Your soul is already in a union. It has nothing to do with the fact that you are separate. What the universe wants from you and what your soul wants from you is that you start living. If you think of the fact that how short time we have in this planet Earth, really think about it. It might look like you have 70 years or 80 years, but it's extremely small amount of time. If we think of that universe was created 13 Point six billion, or what they're saying to at this stage. Your lifespan as a human at this time is so short. So why you you stay stuck of thinking I'll be only complete when my I'm with my twin flame? Yes, you will be with your twin flame, and I know hundred percent when you will you be with your twin flame, when you become the higher self. When you become this magnetic energy who understands your self-worth, understands that it's okay to say no, it's okay to do what I'm supposed to do, and even if it sounds like the most ridiculous thing, it's okay to do that. Because your soul has chosen this in this lifetime, and now if you suppress it, you only think of the fact that my life is not worth it, because of my twin flame is now with me. And I know that. I'm not here to judge you. That's absolutely nothing to do uh, to judge you. Because I know that when you are in this obsessive stage, when you're wondering when they come back, how do they come back, what do they say, what should I say, like all of that, when you have these questions, I know that I was in that stage. I could have given anything what I had in that point. But now I'm so extremely thankful for this separation because it has opened me the doors, especially connecting with you, my beautiful people, that I can channel, like I can put the gift I've given into the action and heal and help others to become their higher self. And I'm not going to even lie here that my biggest certification or biggest happiness is when I see that my clients are achieving a lot in this world. It's something that makes me so happy. It makes me to see that I'm so glad that they have taken my advice, my work very seriously, and, they, and they're ready to become their higher self. They're ready to have the abundant life. 
So that's why when I'm talking of that on Patreon, we did a um, Patreon link is in uh, in bio. We did this live call this time, and it's gonna be a recorded version. It's going to be out on Patreon. Those who wish to watch watch it. And it's not that only me I'm talking there and giving you advice. It's we all are sharing and we all are talking. So if you wish to join the next one, it's on the 9th of July. Again, the same time, I believe, that we'll do... Uh, if the, if anyone you would say, listen, if it, like if I get more... I would put it out on Instagram to ask what time would be the best for you because we're living in a different time zones. So maybe Central Europe will go a little later because this time it was six o'clock. Maybe we push it to eight o'clock and New York time will be two o'clock that others could join as well. So you can just tell me uh, if you're really interested of joining and talking and sharing. I believe it gives you so much because you really understand that you are not alone. Plus seeing how others have developed. I have this one beautiful soul. Oh my. She's a fire. She's, I mean, she's beautiful. She's everything. I mean, she's just amazing. And her transformation within a one month is, I wish she would, I hopefully she can join us on 9th of July and she can share. This time she shared also on Patreon her story, her point of view. And her point of view was exactly... Um, how do I say, what I told her in the beginning. In the beginning, she could not accept that information as well. She was only about the union as physical. And now she has discovered her self-worth. She has discovered her voice. The way she was explaining, I was like, wow, I'm so proud of her. Here's another thing I actually want to tap into before we are, we are um, going to talk us today's story is that all about spirituality and knowing something. We should never forget that sometimes we need to forget everything we already know and trust the new way. Uh, and what I mean under here is that I often say that, let's say my last podcast was about the spiritual science and spiritual, what do they mean? Or when my when I get channeling through that, why I actually never really tell to my clients that this can happen or that can happen or that as ha happens as a union. And there's a reason behind it. Because when our mind knows something, we start to manipulate with our mind. But we have to understand everything is energy. So sometimes we have to forget everything we know, everything we have practiced, everything what we really believe in, in order to open a new door. Yes, I mean, there are always the base rules, what are we going to follow, but you can't control. If you tend to control the outcome, this outcome will never come. Or if it comes, it means that the universe is like, I want to give you more. But since you don't believe in it, since you do not see your soul worth, I give you this. And then you get this and you're sitting there and wondering, but now I want this one. Now I want this. So it will never end for you. But when you leave it open, you're like, I know that I deserve this. I know I deserve the highest possible outcome. The universe will give you that exactly what you deserve based on your energy. So this is why when people ask me, can you tell me when my twin flame can comes back or how do they, I'm like, I, I'm not going to, it doesn't make any sense because that clearly shows that you are not in a union with yourself. The moment you are in a union yourself, I tell you what happens. You feel like I don't even need to contact my twin flame. Why do I need to? If my twin flame and it's not the ego based. It's just you feel like detached from the physical because you understand your higher self. You understand the higher energy. Anyway, it was a long intro. So thank you for listening for that. Again, I just mentioned that on 9th of July on Patreon, I send it out the email list. I'm trying to send. I, I realized that I didn't send any of my email uh, list people the invite, invitation. And I apologize for that because I know that many of you are not on Patreon, but if you could join the Patreon, it would be get better because I can send you quickly the updates, information, everything that is happening with live calls, 
with updates for like for example the full moon is coming up and I have something really exciting happening for the full moon so all of these things if you can join the patreon it's $5.99 a month and you get the extra content and extra information anyways let's go to the story dear soul friend after a few weeks or maybe a month of listening to your channel I've decided to write my story of twin flame awakening that is now in self-realization mode, if I can tell that. I met my twin flame during the summer of post-pandemic. He worked at a local store and I noticed him very clearly. Yes, not my type. Tall, white, silvery hair and silvery beard. beard sorry. He wears black glasses, a professor type of look. I was drawn to him but really surprised by his accent. It's southern one. I, I hate the southern accent, but I immediately loved his voice. We exchanged smiles and talked between shells in the store and, the and at the register. I gave him a nickname and made jokes about his hot looks to my husband. My husband is my small, soul, soulmate of 15 plus years. Summer went on and our marriage somehow came to a strange crossroads. My husband suggested that we could maybe try to being, bring a third person into our bedroom, another man. He would love to watch me with another man that could make me satisfied. This brought to a many on conversation and real closeness at the time between my husband and me. The summer was insane. We talked a lot of our sex life was very animalistic and it seems for two weeks that we barely slept and sparks were flying between us. The reality was not real anymore. My husband told me that he's not jealous of me and he completely trusts me. Later in the fall, I came to realize that the only person I could see myself with other man than, than my husband was this hot guy from the store. I was pulled into this situation and started to do some snooping online. You must know, even just as a first name and knowing where the person lives is enough these days to dig information on them. Well, I think we women are uh, pretty good at uh, finding the information when we need to find something. I had a friend of mine when we were younger and she always said like, I am the master of FBI finding people online and seeing what they do. And I was like, yeah, women, women tend to, I think men are not so much into this, but if they need, they would, but women, yeah, women are little, little FBI's. Anyhow, let's go on. Troy lives in a town nearby and he's a writer. He's divorced and has two kids. He talked to me about how much his kids love local beaches, their town. Nothing about his wife. I did find out he indeed has an ex-wife living in the same state. She's a writer and her autobiography was made into a major movie feature. He was one of that encouraged her to write this story. I had to watch the actual movie. My husband and I both watched it. This is where the obsession stage came in full speed. My mind was spinning as I discovered more about Troy's life's past. He is a published author. I had to get his old published poems. I myself used to write poems, but only in a deep emotional turmoil as an escape. Basketball player I used to play in school. A lover of old movies, but also someone who spends a lot of time outdoors. We had some things in common, but more importantly, I felt I knew him. I felt drawn to him. It started a sexual attraction, but quickly turned into mind, soul feeling, for reasons unknown. My mind got completely obsessed as I was reading his poems. Also, when I listened to his reading these poems, I felt so close to him. I started to see him out of nowhere in my mind and in places where I went. It was like flashbacks of deja vus that never happened. And somehow it felt like it did actually happen. I just, uh, before I continue, I am going to say that the fact that we get drawn into a stranger we have never met before, often not our type at all, there is like how do I say, like for your mind, you're sitting there and you're like, what is happening? While your whole body is completely alive. I just, rem I would never forget. And that's why I say always when people ask me, will I ever forget my twin flame or will it ever stop? 
I'm like, no, it will never. Because it's like you will never forget your home. You will never forget the house you were born in, like you were lived in. Even though was it good or bad or whatever, it was your first home. And you will never forget it, where you come from. Regardless of what happens in your life, same is with this connection. It can take a different perspective. It, it, uh, you can have a different way of understanding it. And you use this energy as your power, but you will never forget it. When I took part of this group hypnosis session, I clearly felt and saw him walking around me. While I was lying down on yoga mat, similar to when it observes its own body in a state of meditation from above, but this was him observing me. I saw him behind me in the bathroom as a reflection in mirror and other familiar, familiar places. This was a very strange feeling, as we didn't really communicate that much. I'm just going to say here another thing that is in, uh, how do I say, I do not have the 100% overview or um, like the knowledge or whatever we would like to call it of, uh, of this um, idea but I'm really researching it at the moment so if any of you has an idea or, or advice for it then it's more than welcome. What I'm trying to say to here is that I've heard and that and there are how do I say this the uh, parallel parallel timelines are happening at the same time when we are living. So that can mean that you can shift, like parallel universes, that you can shift yourself from, like in one other universe, you might be your, with your twin flame already and in this place. Or you actually have this out of body, when I say why I'm big advocate for the out of body experience, with through breath, breath work is that you really go somewhere else and while well, you know you are here on earth and everything it's not that you're crazy but you have this other experience that is so intense and so beautiful that it's really like in another universe and there you can just like you know you like you play around it's absolutely incredible and when she's talking about the hypnosis I'm just thinking like I don't have the proof yet and that's why I'm not talking about it out loud. I've done a quite a lot of um, quite a lot of research about it. But I would prefer to share this with someone who has how do I say scientific understanding of it because I don't want to how do I say something say it out something that can be a thing so we can discuss this as a possibility, but I don't want to say that this is the reality because I think we are in the age of discovering so much about our universe, about our soul energy, about the parallel universe, the astral um, uh, traveling, uh, all these kind of things. So we have, we have like a completely new world coming up. Anyways, let's go on from here on. One day I realized that he posted something about moving back south when his kids are done and moved to college. I panicked and I completely froze. What if he leaves and I never had a chance to see him again and touch him? I had to see what happens if I ask him to join for a threesome. While I already purchased his poetry on a streaming site and he suddenly sent me a mes message thanking me for supporting him. This is where a prelude to Twin Flame has ended or started. He sent me a short email that he knew my face from my store and that he always enjoyed, enjoyed it when our paths crossed. So I responded with eagerness, my husband watching this and thinking this is some kind of a foreplay. He responded, I'm intrigued. Yes, indeed. Text any time. I'd love to hear more. I work all the time, so I don't have an answer right away. I'm working or, working or with my kids, but I answer. Good night. When I told him about threesome, he only said, Sorry, no thank you. I appreciate your interest in me, but I don't want to pursue this. I noticed you too, but I'm never sure of such things. I'm flattered, and I'm very interested. But are you single? I am, but I'm really focused on my kids and my work, and I and haven't been dating at all since the breakup last year. Still, I'm curious about you. 
Thanks for writing. I'm going to sleep as I have to get to work early. Good night. This was the only exchange we had, and my world come, came down to almost a standstill and end. As you can imagine, I felt extremely painful to be rejected by a person I don't actually know. It took me over two weeks to start eating normally and not to spend time in my bed most of the afternoons. My husband gave me an ultimatum that I need to snap out of it and he, he can't be with someone who is so emotionally crushed and checked out. He told me this on the phone while I was in a Troystown sitting in a cafe near his house contemplating if I should call him and talk to him. What would I even say? During these two weeks, I started to write poems, filling a thick notebook with them, sometimes 15 pages a day. That notebook is now filled completely. I also started to write a letter to Troy and rewrote it many times. It was a first and very confusing letter and later on just full of sadness. After those two, three, uh, two weeks for maybe three months, I felt like I was trapped and made to live here. Where is not my home anymore, I could tell why, but I felt like my soul died the day he told me no. Also, that my home was not here anymore with my family, husband and kids, but two towns over with Troy. I tried not once but two times to ask tarot readers and mediums, what is happening? Why do I have this unexplained attachment that I can't shake it off with a guy that I don't know? I also went to a Reiki cleaner session that made me feel great. They told me it's a previous life connection and they both su suggested cord cutting. In my mind and soul, I didn't want to do that. I felt like I would lose a part of myself if I did it and I didn't know what to think. I am sharing a little bit here about, first of all, uh, your husband is your soulmate like you said. And here I'm something to tell you. When you are a soulmate, you're helping each other in this world. I have discussed this, that I help my husband as, uh, as to go through his spiritual awakening and everything. When we are married to our soulmates and we have children together and everything, it's a beautiful harmony, actually. Uh, they want the best for us. And what I pick it up from here is exactly that the reason of the threesome is exactly for to elevate her sexual healing energy. And actually, it's not a coincidence. And I mean, people can call me crazy or whatever, but I don't believe in coincidences. That if the Troy is the twin flame, uh, is that the only one who can actually hear our sexual energy is the twin flame. That's why I'm really... I always, I could never speak about sexuality the way I do today. If you think I've been always so open to talk about sexual energy, tantra, all of this, no, never. I mean, for me, even to when somebody were talking to me, how they were thinking of having sex with someone or anything like this, I found it extremely vulgar and extremely like, how do I say, not nice for a woman to talk like this and all of this kind of thing. But that clearly shows that my mind, my, my sexual energy was extremely blocked. It was very surface level, very, very surface level. Today, I am all about educating of sexual healing, sexual energy, the, uh, also everything that is tantric, everything that is, uh, that is energy based. I don't see no longer sexuality as two physical bodies are having sex. It's, I mean, it's very, very, how do I say, um, simple and, I mean, it's like an instinct. But sexuality, sexual energy is the one who has to heal you, make you feel good, power you, like give you that kind of power that you feel you can uh, move the mountains. So what I just picked it up from here is exactly that both of them are playing a role. Now when we're thinking what, why he said no, there can be also that his sexual energy is somehow blocked and he's very afraid of opening himself up. So that, of course, I would need some more back, back uh, 
story and everything, but that's what I picked it up. It's not that he doesn't want and everything. It's just that it's too new and too scary as an energy. So it's um, it's confusing. Another thing I would say here is that the cord cutting, I will make an episode about it, but I do not recommend any of these things. Why? Because on that moment, you lose part of you. Even with your soulmates, even with your, uh, if you have any kind of connection, you have to realize you made that decision. Your soul is part of them. If you cut them off, they either get sick. They will not feel good. You will get sick because their energy is feeding yours. I know many of them are saying you need to do the cord cutting, get it, cut them off. I think this is a, I don't want to say wrong because I'm not this kind of, I don't believe in a wrong or right or what is the right. But what I would really, really like you to understand that it's, it's the energy. And if you're cutting off the energy of the purest love and the purest sense, and, and then what? It's, if we think of like, you let them go, but they're part of you. They're forever part of you. So I'm not a big advocate for cover cutting, but we can talk about this one point. Things got seemingly back to normal at home, but that was just an illusion. Troy blocked me and unfollowed me on social media while I was still very attached to him. He became a runner, which I know only now now. On February 22 of 2022, he refused to help me in the store and sent me another guy to do it. He said, Jeff will help you. He walked away to the next customer. My heart was crushed. I tried not to think about him, but that is not easy. He was still in the back of my mind. Sex life at home got less frequent, and every time we were making love, I was thinking of Logan. I started to refuse the physical connection. Well, now it's 2023, and somehow I came across with twin flame words in one of the tarot readings. This was shortly after I had a strange dream where Troy was stepping out his parked car and said to me, I was thinking of you this week. Who says that in a dream? I thought. I never had dreams where he talks to me. This has dramatically changed as I'm listening to your podcast and I started to feel the urge to communicate with my twin flame. I never realized this is possible. Thanks to you, it's actually happening. <laughs> and that's so kind of you to write this down. Yes, uh, as much as you can call me crazy, as much as you can t tell me that this is not the reality, you all can communicate with your twin flames all the time. Both they come to your dreams or they really give you the message. That's why the throat chakra exercise, if you can do it, do it. Because from there, you'll you get the answers for. And you start, you start to realize everything. What is the truth? It's not the mind that is trying to control a physical union. There is so much more. The soul level energy. Now let's go. Well, now it's 2023 somehow, oh, sorry, maybe two weeks ago, I had a very strong, almost choking feeling in my throat, pulsing hard, squeezing and pounding all the same throat chakra area. So I started to talking to Troy out loud about him not being alone. This is something I, always, something I have always felt very strongly when I wrote my letter to him as well. I told him I'm here for him so that he knows where and how to, t uh, to reach me. I am here. You're not alone. I'll be waiting for you when you're ready to talk to me, to meet me. Let me know your fears. I want to help you. I think of you often, and I know you do as well. You are not alone. I'm here with you. You can trust me. And I felt an unexpected release and the relief of my energy in my throat. Beautifully written, exactly what I'm teaching. The moment you are feeling some kind of anxiety or your throat gets blocked or some words try to come out, speak it out loud. The only way you're going to hear yourself and your soul, because remember you're sharing the same consciousness, 
whatever they are going through is going to come out of your mouth. When I'm channeling for you, sometimes it's hard for me. It really takes my energy down that sometimes I even go to sleep after because it's exhausting going into the other's energy, the soul. And if you have the soul guides who are like trying to protect you, it's difficult. Even though my soul is, I mean, pure, it has no intention of harming or anything like this. I always have to be very careful. Here, what she said is exactly, I remember it was back in last July or something, when all of a sudden I started typing on my phone, everything that came, and I was like, I know you're afraid, I know it's this and this and this. I wrote this whole thing down. A year later, my twin flame said to me, pretty much exact same words. And I'm sitting and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not crazy. Twin flames are not illusion or thinking that something has come into our mind. We happen to have the same soul that split. Does everyone have a twin flame? No. But if you do, you just know. And this is the knowing. There's also a doubt. And this is also another big part of this. Knowing and the doubt. When, like, so many of us I've spoken to, we are all, how do I say, <clears throat> we know, like, with our minds, it doesn't make sense to us. We're like, you know, we, it could be any, anybody out there. And it's not also like a crazy crush. It's a very different energy. It's really feeling at home. So let's go from here. Now fast forward to the last few nights. I decided to talk to Troy again two nights ago. I told him I'm here and that I know he can hear my thoughts, but I would really like him to give me a sign that is clear and only he can send it. I want to know he can hear me. I'm here for you and I love you. I never said this before out loud to him. Last night, something extraordinary happened. I woke up from a dream where I walked down the paved street. Troy and I were walking hand in hand and I could feel his warm, big hand surrounding my fingers and in this dream, at that moment, I heard a song. This was a song that only two, three days ago suddenly made sense to me. I realized that one of the TV show final, finale of my old favorite show is very similar to Twin Flame Journey. More from the point of the human ego. In the show, a young woman and a man had a mission to save another couple and their child. However, they didn't know about any of this. In the end, as the song, What a Wonderful World Plays, these two young people, many other older versions of themselves, dissolve all into the light while leaving everything peaceful, darkness. All this hit me three days ago, standing in assembly when this song was played. It was like the ending of a twin flame reunion at the end of their lives. Today I woke up from a dream where this song played out loud. I also could hear the word truth being spoken of over the song. Music is not something you are supposed to experience in dreams, am I right? I had to cry this morning and smile at the same time. I felt amazing peace this morning. As you and your listeners can only imagine, I think I got the message I wanted. The sign I needed from a twin flame. I'm not sure what is the next, but I spent the whole morning humming this song and taking it in the sights of the world. Right away I'm realizing that this is not over at all and I'm happy to be here as this, at this point of my life. Yes, I'm still married to my soulmate, but my world now seems to be more than that. I'm not sure why this journey started 2021 will bring. I'm now starting to read about breathwork and also listening to the power of now. Thank you for taking in all my thoughts and also creating this community where people can safely share their feelings and journey. I have no one else in the circle of friends I could share this with. This weighs on me a bit on a, on a, on me a bit at times. I appreciate you very much and the time you put into every episode. Wow, wow. She can you everybody felt how well she is writing it, how deeply there is this awareness and understanding. Uh, she's a very good writer. Um, there is 
the beauty of this love and understanding exactly what I said in the beginning. It has nothing to do with physical union. The moment you understand that there is more, there is the energy, there is this beauty, it's going to be an amazing journey. Talking about music, mm, if we ask certain times questions, and I don't make this up, we can tell that, oh yeah, then your mind makes a connection when you think of that, I tell you that. Recently, I also had the same thing. Sometimes I want to test myself. I'm a bit crazy about that because still my logical mind comes in and I'm like, is everything that I'm really feeling and seeing and touching like without having a proof is the reality? And I had this, uh, so I had a telepathic communication, like I did about 30 minutes good meditation with my twin flame. I shared certain things and I was asking certain questions. And then I just said that if you can, give me the answer through that song. Because that song was back then, which I listened a lot and resonated with me. And now I'm not kidding you here. I, I mean, of course, I could go to YouTube and put the music on or, you know, manipulate this way. But my way is always like, if I put it out there for universe, I forget about it and I move on. Like it's kind of, a, how do I say... Uh, trust I trust it that if it's true if it's something I that goes with me and also I do believe that somehow you manifest all of that because of your energy so it's not something I'm going to control after that's why I say control is not going to bring you the outcome and the first thing I sat in my car I put on the radio and it's the first song so now if you listen of of the whole idea how it can happen like how is how is it possible? I could have sat in this car 10 minutes in prior or 10 minutes later because I don't choose the radio channel. I don't choose the music from there. Or I wouldn't have sat in this car at all on this day. But universe, if you trust the universe, if you trust the journey, it will give you the, uh, the, the answers. Today, is this journey's story is going to continue, actually, because uh, she, she sent me this story. And uh, she said, Breathwork has been truly amazing experience. In my previous episode, I told, you, told her email when she talked about the breathwork. And I've said this many times on my podcast, and I keep on saying this. My main goal is any of you who are listening, any of you who are resonating it, any of you who have any... <laughs> wants to become the higher self, please go for a one breathwork session. Just do yourself this investment, go for the breathwork. It's never expensive and it will make your life absolutely different. And I've been saying this from the day one. I also will offer at one point for my Patreons and everybody the courses. We're going to do all of that together I cannot stop repeating this enough that for me, that you have paid attention to listen what I have to say, what is my story, what is the whole way of how I see it, and you have taken your time to listen to me, you know how much it means to me? You don't have no idea how thankful I am for that. I even have tears in my eyes. Every single one of you who has taken your time, your precious time, Listen to my podcast, leave a comment, leave a little like, whatever is over there. I'm like, wow. You just touched my soul from the deepest core. And that's why my main goal is to help you to become the higher self. Whatever I'm putting out of the podcast, whatever I'm doing, it's for me, it's like I have to serve you. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. So now I share the same, uh, same soul story from the breathwork just to give you an overview why I'm advocating it so much. I need, to, I need to share this other breathwork experience with you. Last two times something else had been happening. Right after breathwork cycle, I usually go to sleep. No disturbance in the form of phone, electronic devices. 
So now, last two times after I closed my eyes, I started to see a small image in front of my eye closed lids. It is small and reminds me a window into someone's world. As is one of looking into a very blurry picture window into someone's apartment from far away. At first, room is empty and later I see a person walking inside. This person is my twin flame Roy. And I'm feeling like this in this apartment. I have to look very hard to see clear picture as it goes out of focus very easily. This is not a dream as I can clearly open my eyes and images disappear and come back again when I close them. Am I experiencing astral projection? Absolutely. That's why I'm talking of the twin flame when you do the breath work. Yes, you know where you are. It's not like you are out of your body, but you are out of your body. I've been many times traveling to the to the universe, like, and if you get to do breath work and sound healing at the same time, oh my, you're traveling in the universe. You're going to the places, and you can really go and feel and communicate and have your soul family over there. They are giving you answers. They are telling you something that you need to know. And what happens is that, yes, you can open your eyes, you're back in reality, but then you close and you're back in the subconscious. And it's so beautiful. Yes, why I'm not recommending this to do alone, because many of you are asking me, can I do this alone at home? Can I practice? Yes, you can. It's... But sometimes we have cramps. We're starting to get cramps because we have pain in our body and the fears in our body that starts to go out of that. So having someone as a support there is often, like if I do, I have like, my hands are in uh, completely cramped up. I can't move them. I cannot. The last time I did, I pretty much, it took me very long time to come back to my body because I said I traveled. Oh my. I traveled somewhere beautiful, somewhere where my soul belongs, like as a universe. Right? And I had so much love. I had like the bliss, what I had afterwards. I cannot even describe this. And my instructor had to tap on my head many times that uh, that my nervous system would come help me to come back. So she was like, okay, okay. And when I, obviously when I came back, I was very dizzy afterwards. So I needed to have a moment on my own. Uh, but it was beautiful. There's nothing dangerous over there, but it's just the fact that it, the more pure you become, uh, the more strong, like, and, what I'm trying to tell you here that in this breath work, you can't control your thoughts. You can't go into the breath work by thinking, oh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to say this. I'm going to do that. No, it's your soul. And that's where your soul comes out. It was the same with me with my podcast. My soul was just like, I like you a lot. You have a lot of knowledge. You know a lot of these things, but you are not sharing this with anybody. So it pretty much serves nothing in this world. It's great that you know. But other people need your help, the soul, and you have made that decision. You have said you come here and you help them. So now what is the help of you knowing it, sitting here and have this knowledge when no one else is knowing it? And I had to start the podcast, which was really out of my comfort zone, to be honest, just because I know I'm not fluent English speaker. I I know I have an accent. Maybe it's hard for people to listen and all of that. So I... My ego mind knows all of my weaknesses, but my soul was like, great, you have these weaknesses, but you have message to, to share. So even if you don't speak, who cares? You have to tell your, your, your version. So that's why I say that when you become your higher self, you need to do the things you don't really, your ego mind doesn't really like you doing because it highlights your weaknesses. But then your soul is like, I will not let you to sleep until you start doing it. And so let's go on from here. I would really like to add following to story of my twin flame journey. I do realize I'm sending a lot of info. I'm happy if you share with your audience, but also if you read it just to yourself. When do you say that once you meet your twin flame and realize that what is happening and the awakening process starts, things start to fall into place in your life? Even more so, after the period of struggle and desperation, you stop chasing your twin flame and concentrate on yourself. You see, I don't even need to 
teach or have a coaching session, the person already knows itself. This was true for my personal journey. During the period of obsession, I even considered getting a job at the same place as my twin flame Troy. I went for the interview. I told him about this via email or text. I'm not, I'm not sure, sure, sure anymore. Tro, Troy only said, wow, surely it's a great place to work. I have to agree with that. But somehow I decided I, w- it would be, I would be too cruel for myself and for him to make him see me every day at work if he blocked me and shut me down. So I had to turn my attention elsewhere. I found a teaching job that surprisingly I fit right into. It was my last option and it turned out to be the best option. I have summers off and I can devote the other part of the year to my other job, spending most of my time outdoors and teaching adults. I would never do that if I would get the job at his place of work. This only occurred to me recently. Last few months as I've been working, I had many special days on the job. I would see the repeating numbers 11, 11, 2, 2, 2, 12, 12, and others. I also had visions of feelings that my twin flame Troy was walking halls and I could see him in a hallway with my mind's eye. He has masters in writing and could easily do the job in the same institution as I do. I started to feel like he would fit right in and I would be a great mentor to kids and I started to wonder if he would if he ever thought of doing this type of job. It was a very strange feeling, but it also very assuring that I'm here and he's somehow here with me, despite the fact that in a 3D world. We are not around each other since February 22. We do live only a few months down away, but we never see each other. We go to the same beaches, trails, but never run to each other. It used to give me a sad feelings and also frustration. Now I smile as I walk around those places and I feel like we are enjoying the same space and it makes me feel calm. Fast forward to now, maybe three weeks ago, my coworker asked me out out of nowhere, flat out. Do you like your job? Are you happy? I want to know that that this is a person that I rarely talk to. And so this came a surprising question from this person. We were casually walking around the local library for a tour when she asked me this. I answered without thinking about it immediately. I do like this job and I can really myself doing this for many years. It gives me pleasure to work with our group team and a chance to have summer off and devote the time for the others as a teaching job. It was I have spoke from the depth of my soul without even realizing it. When I think of it now, I think it was a little awakening and eye-opening moment for me, but it only occurred to me recently. Um... So here is another thing, that when you have a random person asking you a question that you normally never speak to, or anything as well, there are two things. One of the things is that your twin flame is actually asking this question and another person is channeling this, because it, you have this really strange feeling where a person you don't know really well asks you something and you're looking their face and you're hearing their voice and you're like, and you're feeling the energy and you're like, Something doesn't make sense on this picture. Like something is really off. Uh, and uh, and when you speak from and then you speak from your soul. You say certain things like out of nowhere that you would have never said it before. But it's either your twin flame, like I said, or your soul guides are like trying to test you a little bit. I also want to say that things are now home very quiet, and I'm focusing on my personal growth. I'm not sure what will happen in our marriage. I think I'm the point where I, can ima- where I can imagine life without my husband, which before gave me serious anxiety and heart pal- palpitations, like I would cease to exist without my spouse. Now it seems less scary that we could possibly be able to exist without each other. On the other side, I also cherish all we have together and all that we accompl- un- accomplished as a couple. And it seems not fair to leave now and destroy the family life we built together for our kids and us. We both grew and are different people now. We do agree on many deep spiritual things that I don't talk often about, but not on many day-to-day operation of a family life. At this stage, I'm all right with waiting and seeing what 5D and maybe 3D connection we Troy brings. I know he's still working on his personal awakening, 
you out of all the pe people probably know how I know it and I feel it. It has been two years since I noticed Troy out there in the world and since my soul felt, since my soul felt deep unexplained connection to him. The separation started in February 22, so it has been over a year and only now I'm starting to feel at peace with myself and truly starting to know myself more. I'm waiting for him to let me know, however he thinks it's ap appropriate, if he is ready to talk to me or, or meet me in 3D. I will wait to sign a message and keep you updated. I would love to, get to know your thoughts on my twin flame journey and what energies are you reading from me and my twin flame. The end actually said a lot of things. So I just read this sentence. I'm waiting for, for him to let me know. This sentence is very ego-based. And not bad ego-based, because we tend to think that our ego is bad. Oh no, our ego is not bad. You actually know. The moment you shift your energy of knowing that your twin flame wants to talk to you, your twin flame wants to be in a connection with you, your twin flame is part of you, and you no longer question if my twin flame loves me, if my twin flame comes back to me, when my twin flame comes to be, what my twin, twin flame would say to me, how it will happen. This is where they start coming back to you. Until you have the questions, they will not come back. Why? Universe wants you to understand that this is not a physical connection. They want you to trust this, like universe wants you to trust the spiritual world, energies, everything. I have to tell you something, that when you become the higher self, you will feel energies, you, you go, you have this full different life. Like I'm living a parallel life. I treat my 3D body well, I treat my 3D life well, but also my 5D where I'm going in different, like sometimes I can just feel everything and I'm reading the other people's mind and I'm like, I know, I just know, but I can't tell. And all I can do is just be there. Something I want to say based on the soulmate and that uh, sexual energy over here, which I said I normally don't talk about it. But here, if uh, not normally, now I'm very open about it. I believe that we should have more information about it. We should have more understanding that everything that is low vibrational, such as porn, such as quick, like, you know, one night stands and all of these things, they give you nothing. They just eat your soul. But if you become part of your body and you feel everything inside of your body, your hands, your elbows, your neck, your lips, your, your cheeks, oh my God, there are so many beautiful points. And sexual energy is the one that will heal everything inside of you. I do think uh, with you and your husband, it'd be very helpful to go to some tantric retreat or uh, like energy, sexual energy retreat, as they are trying, both of them were trying to heal that. And that will be the key for the twin flame, either the 3D union or something like this. Because both of them are guiding you in this. One blocked it by saying no, because you had to first experience this energy inside of you. Why? I've spoken this before as well. Why, like many of the twin flames, are having the sexual energy with your twin flames so if you haven't even had sex with them or anything like that and you feel your body is like live and a rose and you just feel this weird sense of everywhere, like everywhere in your body, is that we're starting to heal our sexual energy. Uh, tantric massage is very, lingam massage for the men is normally, but also for women is out there, like it's not called lingam. These things, I know we can laugh about it and we can think about it. Oh my, I'm not doing it, which I would have said to you exactly two years ago. Now I see this completely like, you know, we're having massage for our body. But if we don't have a purest form of sexual energy, what's the point? It's, this has to heal us. And I can see how many women and men are not having actually proper intimacy, proper sexual energy, and that is holding them back so much. So 
it has nothing to do with vulgarity or something like or nastiness or something. It's everything for your healing. So this is something I'm really picking up that is very important for this beautiful soul. Anyways, it was a long episode. Uh, thank you for listening again. I really enjoyed it. She's such a good writer. I hope you enjoyed it too. And I'm just going to go quickly over the information. Like I said, on 9th of July, on my Patreon, if you join the Patreon, you can join the live Zoom call where you can talk, share, experience, ask questions. I will be there. None of your stories will go out as with your name and with your video. I'm just, that's why it takes me a little bit longer to put it out the previous recording because I'm taking off any of those who join that their names and their faces are not visible just for the security reasons and just overall it has nothing to do with you it's just with your story from your soul and also like this you can see it on patreon what did we do the last time the last time was really a test run i thought if one two people show up it'd be great i think we ended up like eight or nine eventually might be wrong here at one point we were more like so I don't know if there are people coming and going. Cause any, everybody has their life. But I just think that if we can share and have this safe ba- place of sharing stories, uh, it takes a lot of, I mean, like the heaviness off of you. So that's why I am doing this on 9th of July. Again, I will put out the time if, if we change. Otherwise, it's 12 o'clock of New York time and 6 o'clock of Central European time. If these times are not exactly the best for you, write it down for me and I'll try to find the best combo, whichever way we can do. The next thing is that, of course, if you like this episode, like and subscribe and get connected. You can always share your story, twinflameawakeningjourney at gmail.com. If you wish to have a free consultation, the first 45 minutes call is absolutely for free. The time goes extremely quickly. But I would like to somehow stick to the 45 minutes, the first call, just because after I do the meditation for half an hour and I can take about two or three clients maximum per day just for my own energy as I need to meditate, I need to make the notes and all of that. And so if we can stick to the 45 minutes, it's great. I know I always go over time because I love your stories. I love to hear them. I love to have this full overview. And then, of course, you can book afterwards continuous calling with healing sessions and all of that. And then what else? What else? Follow on Instagram because on Instagram I'm putting out the questions and more information time to time. Same on Facebook. And all of the links are in bio and also on TikTok, of course. So wherever, because I put in the shorter versions, they're out there daily just to keep you up to date. Anyways, it was an extremely long episode. I hope it kept you awake. I hope you got some insights from here today. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope to see you soon here. Lots of love and light. That you were lost and this is a clue.